Coming up, Jack Wolf Knives brings one back by popular demand. We take a look at my new SOCOM Auto and fantastic flipping folders. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Back to the show. My favorite comment this week uh, certainly put wind in my sails. Uh, this is from Mason Lemons, uh, HN6UY. The world becomes a little better of a place when people that are actually nice and who promote good manners and etiquette are also deadly. We love what you're doing, Bob. Well, thank you, Mason. Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, I appreciate that. When I started making this show with Jim, um, I knew that my parents were watching and I knew that my daughters uh, on occasion would be listening. And so uh, I've always kept that in mind. So I appreciate that. The deadly part really makes me feel good. Uh, I do appreciate that. That, of course, is untested, and hopefully it always remains untested. I've always thought, you know, I'm not a tough guy. I do know that, but I've I've trained with a lot of tough guys, and hopefully those tips come through if I ever need them. Uh, so uh, whatever you can, uh, when you can. Thanks so much, Mason. I do appreciate it. Uh, and thanks one and all for watching and listening this past week to the shows, to the interview, and uh, Thursday Night Knives, and of course, the shorts and videos that we're putting up. Okay, uh, that said, I think it's time now for a pocket check. In my front right pocket today, I had the beautiful attention to detail mercantile uh, Mark One. This was one of the very, uh, very first uh, examples of the model that Douglas Esposito ever made. And I saw this on Instagram and had to go for it. Uh, it was those beautiful, beautiful um, micarta inlays there, uh, all done very accurately, very, very, very accurately with a panograph, an old fashioned uh, machine, you know, from uh, I'm not early 20th century, if not even before that, uh, where you can scribe things over here with a sort of pencil and over here it's it's cutting out. That's my that's my very uh, rudimentary understanding of the machine. I actually saw the panograph in Douglas Esposito's shop uh, way back when, when he was out of the back of his Brazilian jiu jitsu shop in uh, Manassas, VA. He's not there anymore. Um, he's left our state sadly, uh, but he's still making awesome knives and he's, uh, using, uh, more modern machinery these days. Uh, this is a great knife. I'll be, uh, though it does have some, um, you know, it's not nearly as smooth as what he's making now and on bearings. Uh, but that's part of what I love about this, uh, sort of like my, uh, tattoo on my left arm. It, it is an early work of a master and, um, when the guy who made my uh, makes made my tattoo sees my tattoo, which hasn't been for a long time, he's always embarrassed. Oh, I had such a heavy hand back then. Now I'm so much more refined. Well, the same thing could be said for this folder. Uh, it is rock solid and beautiful, uh, but in terms of its action and such, um, an early example, but still incredible. I love it. Just not the fidgetiest, but you know what? That's not what it was made for. Deep hollow grind, and of course, looks like an Italian speedboat. All right, uh, next up in my pocket was the beautiful and uh, classy Little Bro Jack from Jack Wolf Knives. This was the second release of this knife, and I believe I lucked out with the handle material. Uh, I got the blue Kiranite here. Um, these, this was sent to me by by Ben Belkin of Jack Wolf Knives. So, um, you know, I uh, certainly will happily accept whatever he wants to send me. But in this case, this was my favorite material that was being offered on this run. And uh, it's really beautiful. It looks to me like uh, something you might see while floating through outer space, you know, just nebula, etc. Nice, uh, very thinly ground, hollow grind with the Beautiful machine satin on this one. Uh, on all these second runs of Jack Wolf knives that uh, he's bring, bringing out different blade treatments. You know, that first whole year and a couple of months were all sort of uh, uh, grinder satin blades. 
Um, and then on the second runs, he's been doing hand, hand rub satin uh, with a sort of horizontal grain. Uh, and he's been doing a PVD coating and all these different treatments to both the blade steel and the titanium bolsters, uh, as well as new, new materials. So keeping it fresh and exciting and still making every run uh, desirable uh, for the collector. So uh, really psyched about Jack Wolf knives. Okay. And next up, another brand or another maker I'm so into now <laughs> is Jed Hornbeek, especially uh, this knife. I believe uh, from everything I've seen from Jed Hornbeek, I got the one knife that is the most me knife. <laughs> and there are others, you know, that he makes some really cool buoys, a lot of really cool tactical combat style knives. Uh, but this one just takes the cake for me because it's EDCable uh, at four and a half inches, uh, 4.75 inches on the blade. I mean, uh, but it's a uh, double edged fighter. You've got a Scandi ground swedge there. So you could be uh, carving up wood with the swedge there. And then it's got a thin hollow grind here on the three V blade and an extremely sharp edge. The handle is just, I mean, you can look at it. You can tell how comfortable just from looking at it. It feels I've, I've been carrying this a lot and showing it off a lot for good reason. It, it feels great in the saber grip. If you can see this hump, it's almost a pistol style grip. So uh, on a thrust, you've got the energy coming up through this hump into, into the back of your hand, down your arm. You're going to be, it's just uh, really nice ergonomics for getting as much power behind that point as possible. But if you come up and use that jimping in a more Filipino grip with the uh, thumb on the back for power cuts and power slices or uh, slashes, uh, it feels great also. Uh, putting the blade at a downward angle to your hand, so accelerating the cut. Uh, it's also great in reverse grip, which is how I carry it, so that it, uh, on a on a draw it would come out like this, except with the right hand. Um, but all you have to do to get a normal grip on it is just take the knife like that and put the back of your uh, knife to your or back of your hand against your body and just kind of pull the knife out like that. Um, so. So far, one of the best uh, small fighters that you can just carry uh, all the time. And this one, to me, is just on the outer limit. Uh, you know, uh, ordinarily, I'd go for something with a shorter handle for for EDC. But this this works great just on the at the three o'clock or two forty five position, as opposed to um, in um, appendix where it is just too big all right last up i have the the stout the mini stout from devo knives uh these guys are just burning it up they just released a new version of the um <clears throat> stout wait no this is the stout new version of the um Mm, growler that's what it is the other one that i have with a swedge and beautiful uh uh, carbon fiber they're just doing great over there uh lefty uh, uh, uh kevin johnson of lefty edc and colin maison pierre of cm designs are just a powerhouse team with devo knives and they just keep coming out with the new improved versions of like the stout also they came out with a the the large bolstered version of this i believe it was the v2 with all sorts of machining really nice but this this one right here has this uh, nitro v blade very very thin on that hollow grind um, ow, ooh, almost got the thumb there. Uh, very nicely contoured um, G10 with the reversible pocket clip, wire pocket clip. Um, <clears throat> nice opening hole, great action. Uh, a non flipper on bearings. I'm just, I love, I'm a sucker for that. And uh, this one is great to fidget with. Um, so, also great to cut with. Didn't happen to use it today, but this was riding in the back left pocket. This was my EDC today. What did you have on you? I had the attention to detail mercantile Mark One, a very, very early, if not the first one. Uh, the Jack Wolf Knives a second uh, release of the Little Bro Jack. I had the Necromance from Jed Hornbeek Knives and the Devo Mini Stout. Um, and I realized just looking at these, like I know all these guys and... Uh, have interviewed all these guys and i um that's exciting to me that's exciting that's exactly what i want my knife collection to be uh made up of knives from the people i've had the the honor of speaking for an hour with i mean that's the real um that's 
to me, I, I mean, I love this channel. I love everything about it. But having the opportunity to talk to these people who are making the knives we love is is probably my favorite part of it. So uh, to have knives from those people uh, is a real honor. When I sit down and look, oh, wow, every one of these, uh, I know these people and I've spoken with them and, and know what's in their heart, at least as far as knife making. And um, that feels great. All right, I'm starting to babble now. All right, coming up um, in uh, March, this, uh, let's see, the third weekend of March, let's get it together, Bob. Um, gentleman junkie knife giveaway at thursday night knives and this time we're giving away this really cool tepe designed um tucson it's the 175 the ts no yeah ts394 i don't know i get these all confused um this is the the one that uh one of the ones that Dave, this old sword blade reviews sent over and that i was harboring for a while because it's so cool i I couldn't believe I had to give this away, but I do. And that's, that's fine. Everyone, you know, it's share the wealth and ow, it's very, very sharp, very pointy. And that's a broad blade. It's about an inch and a quarter long and thinly uh, flat ground, you know, saber ground so that, and you can see that that relief edge is pretty tall. So it is an incredibly uh, sharp and slicey Americanized Tonto here. And you've got that nice sub tip and a great working uh, front area that's totally straight. So great for scraping and, and all the kind of tasks uh, that Americanized Tontos are good for. Uh, also, you know, breaching softer targets and, you know, being a tactical thing. If you look at the handle, it reminds me a little bit of the uh, Strider, only in spirit in how it starts pinched and widens out. And it gives you a lot to hold on to. It's a really nice knife. Uh, you got a sculpted titanium pocket clip, a hidden lanyard post, and a wonderful, outstanding uh, action on the button lock. Button lock on bearings, just awesome. All right, so if you're a gentleman junkie at the, uh, I mean, if you're a gentleman junkie, which is a Patreon member at the highest tier, you're entered in automatically to win this on the third Thursday of the month. We do that every month, so check it out. Uh, we get some really great knives in here to, to give away, and it's always fun uh, to see who wins it. Uh, we also do random giveaways on Thursday Night Knives, um, so there's that as well. All right, coming up, we're going to have uh, Knife Life News. We're going to take a look at uh, some new knives coming out, uh, but first, I just want to say, because we were just talking about Patreon, the quickest way to get there and to uh, become a, a patron and see the kind of things you uh, get in return uh, is to go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. You can also scan the QR code on your screen right here, or you can go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Among this week's specials at Knives Ship Free, the Spyderco Military 2 Blurple Folder is built for durability and cutting performance with a 4-inch blade of CPMS 110V Super Steel. Knives Ship Free has some Jesse Hemphill knives available and on sale now. There's a variety of models and materials in stock, so grab one before they're gone. And the new USA-made Duralock folder by Kershaw, the Bel Air, is becoming a go-to EDC due to its perfect sizing, aluminum scales, steel liners, and MagnaCut blade. It's also equipped with a ball-bearing pivot and a reversible deep carry clip. Get these deals and other great specials from our friends at Knives Ship Free. Just use our affiliate link, theknifejunkie.com slash knives ship free. That's theknifejunkie.com slash knives ship free. Support the show and get a great new knife at the same time. Theknifejunkie.com slash knives ship free. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. All right. So, uh, when we do Life Knife News, I think I have to, I'd like to tell you that I get a lot of information from Knife News and from Knife Magazine. So you should go check out both of those uh, online publications. Uh, Knife Magazine also has a, um, uh, a paper version, uh, but outstanding uh, Knife Publications, Knife News, I love. I love Ben Schwartz's uh, writing. Um, also, Clay uh, Alders over at uh, Knife Magazine also is a great writer. Anyway, uh, Spotted at the Amsterdam meet. So if you don't know what that is, uh, every year uh, there is a meetup, a Spyderco meetup in Amsterdam uh, where they 
kind of leak all of the new designs that are coming out. And there is a very uh, famous super fan uh, called or super collector, super fan called Spider Collector, who they allow to take spy pics. Um, they let it, him certain things. They don't let him take pictures of everything uh, from the Amsterdam meet, but they let him take pictures of some. And here are some images that were released. This first one is very interesting, an upcoming knife called the Charisma. You can see just from looking at it, it is very slender and svelte. Uh, it's got a long, uh, very typical Spyderco uh, blade. It almost looks like it's, uh, I mean, it's not long. It's three inches, but but it's slent. The whole thing looks slender. Okay, let me just say it that way. Called the Charisma. That's BD, uh, CTS BD1N steel, uh, three inch blade. FRN handle lock back, but here's the here's the USP. Here's the kicker. It's eight ounce. It's 0.8 ounces. 0.8 ounces. So it is a real real featherweight. But you've got the um, uh, almost the entire edge length of a PM2 on this knife. So uh, PM2, you know, is a much bigger knife with a longer blade by a half an inch. But it's got that big damn choil up there, so you you miss out on a lot of uh, cutting edge. This knife makes up for it in a smaller, lighter package. So this could be very exciting. Um, also to see if this is a popular one in BD1 and FRN, who knows uh, where they'll take it next. Like this next line uh, that's coming up now, they have a 15V lineup. This is at the bottom of the page here. Um, they're going to go full on 15V um, with, a, with a line of knives coming out of Boulder, Colorado just um you know the boulder models coming out in 15v now 15v is a um steel that has been um promoted a lot by big brown bear uh who is uh, sean houston and he's a heat treater who who takes this 15v which is a c uh a cpm steel and uh he treats it uh to its greatest extent or to its greatest properties, I guess you'd say. I, I have no experience with it, but we've had a lot of people on um, Thursday Night Knives getting the, um, the I think it was a PM2 that came out with it or, or a um, native, I don't remember what it was. Uh, but this 15V steel is super tough and also has incredible edge retention. That is its real uh, strong suit. So. Um, if you happen to use your knives so much and you use your 15 V so much that it dulls, uh, it's going to be, you're going to need some special tools and, uh, uh, you know, special levels of patience to get that edge, uh, back on there, but very cool, very exciting to always see, uh, Spyderco embracing new steels, you know, that 15 V, uh, with the big Brown bear heat treat, uh, knife was, a was a very, very popular proof of concept. So, uh, they're they're kind of jumping headlong, just sort of like um how in the salt series now they have three different steels that they're uh, embracing. You know, Magna Cut being the latest edition, and they're just going um, deep. Oh, let's say, and uh, I like that. All right, next up, uh, coming up from K Bar, this is an exciting one. It's the first USA made folder in fifty years. Uh, first new USA made folder in 50 years. Uh, this one is called the F01. And uh, this is being done with their state and union shop arm. Uh, I believe that's up in New York. Uh, it's a blend of the old and the new, as you can see here. That's a lockback, and you can see a, an ambidextrous wire pocket clip there. Uh, but also you see a um, sort of traditional, um, they're just calling it a modified drop point. But I mean, we can all see it's a modified worn cliff. Uh, sheep's footy it has that sort of uh, slip joint vibe um, but it does have thumb studs or thumb bars you know oblong shaped thumb lozenges or whatever and uh, so modern touch one-handed opening one-handed closing with the mid uh, mid spine lock back but a sort of old school aesthetic that i like that's a 3.5 inch s35 vn blade you get this color accent hardwares and sort of a um morse code like motif you know you got your dots and your dashes i'm not sure if it's um if it means anything but looks good and probably adds to the gription overall uh 3.2 ounces and we're not sure when this will be available all right next up from browse blades yeah that's right browse blades jason browse uh hit hard and hit early with the uh silent soldier 
uh, it was a neck knife and then turned into a flipper and and he he his knives uh, early on really kind of uh, um, rocketed to popularity and then something happened something with d2 something with china something with maybe not being straightforward with the manufacturing i don't really remember i wasn't uh, paying too much attention back then uh, but but jason browse never went away and browse knives are still around and you see them released every once in a while and um i, I gotta be honest they have uh, really nice designs but i'm always shocked at the cost uh, to material balance uh let's take a look at this new one though uh good looker uh, like a lot of Browse blades, it's a big one. That's a four-inch blade. Drop point, D2. He always uses D2, quote-unquote, been using it since before it was cool. Not sure how cool it is, but uh, he's been using it a long time. Um, one of the first to embrace it, uh, but never kind of um, went beyond it, let's say. I remember when D2 was the hot new steel. Um, that's when I got my uh, Protec Rockeye in D2. I was like, oh, my God, I got D2. And and that's how it was back then. But, you know, things progressed, at least uh, if you want to charge, uh, you know, super steel money, you kind of have to offer super steel. But anyway, uh, G10, I, I like the contour G10. I like the overall look of this, as I do many of the Browse designs. Uh, contour G10, you got that sort of maze pattern, which is a uh, signature um, milling motif. And uh, there are only 150 of these going to be made. So... Uh, get on the pre-order if you're interested in this. Um, I, there have to be collectors of this. I, I know we had um, we had a contractor here who was working on our porch years ago, and he had a Browse. I don't remember what it was. It was a, but it was big and it was very tactical, very cool design, and and it was expensive. And this guy used it like it was any other tool in his toolbox. And he said it was awesome. So uh, I feel like I maybe have been sitting here bad mouth and brass blades are kind of giving them the side eye. Uh, but I can say that someone who used their knife like uh, the rest of the tools in his toolbox, a contractor, said that the brass blade he had was awesome. And he was a collector. Uh, obviously, that's why, you know, to him, that was his bang around knife. And uh, I was this was a, a time when I thought uh, where I was pretty impressed by that. All right. Last up, uh, we had Carl Pearson on the show of Who Knives. He's out of Great Britain and he's a knife enthusiast who's been giving the people of Great Britain what they want. And in those restrictive European uh, countries, uh, what they want with his V1 through V3. And now he's got a V4. These are double detent, uh, you know, non-locking knives that have the aesthetic of locking tactical folders and this latest one the v4 has this extremely handsome um americanized tanto actually reminds me a lot of one of the knives in the list coming up um uh reminds me of the k2 blade on the riot it's got an incredible swedge uh a really really nicely shaped um tanto with the hollow grind and the and the flat grind up front with the chisel tip. Uh, this is a flipper, and it does have a thumb stud. It's a titanium frame. You've got the reversible uh, reversible um, pocket clip. you got everything you would want except the lock uh, out of a um, out of a knife. You even get the M390 blade steel, uh, 3.6 ounces. Uh, this should be coming out this summer. Uh, so if you are in Europe or if you're just a, you know, collector and love the look of this knife, I love the look of this knife. Um, you might want to uh, keep your eyes peeled because I know that who knives, they come and they go pretty quickly because there aren't too many people out there doing this. So when he uh, does a drop, when Carl Pearson does a drop, uh, you, you better be paying attention because they go quickly, especially um, I think this one with that awesome Tonto blade. So. He keeps pushing that uh, tactical folder look and uh, keeping it in a non-locking sub three inch bladed uh, uh, context platform. <laughs> All right, coming up, we're going to take a look at uh, the state of the collection, some of the new knives uh, coming in here. Uh, but first, I just want to you know remind you of all the stuff we do here. Uh, check out the Sunday interview show. It drops around 12 noon Eastern Standard Time every Sunday. Check out Thursday Night Knives, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time 
right here on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. Uh, and then also uh, we have the supplemental and all the videos. Also, I want to wish our uh, Irish brothers and sisters a happy St. Patrick's Day. Actually, everyone. You know, my wife uh, is funny. Uh, she's, uh, I guess she's got some Welsh in her, uh, but she becomes Irish every every March 17th. It's the damnedest thing uh, ever since I met her. So uh, this old Italian man, I think, will become Irish this year, though. It's still falling within Lent. Oh, but it's on a Sunday this year, so I can be Irish, and I will. Uh, not to say that they uh, Irish haven't contributed a whole lot more, especially in the arts, uh, but uh, that's what, what we like to talk about on March 17th. All right, all of that and more coming up on the Knife Junkie Podcast. The Shockwave Tactical Torch is your ultimate self-defense companion, featuring a powerful LED bulb that lasts 100,000 hours, a super-sharp crenulated bezel, and built-in stun gun delivering 4.5 million volts. Don't settle for ordinary. Choose the Shockwave Tactical Torch. TheKnifeJunkie.com slash Shockwave. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Coming over here, the sharpshooter, Jack. It needs no introduction. This one was so hugely popular when it first came out not too long ago. Um, this was the first version uh, of, that I have here uh, with, the, with the blue carbon fiber and the um, machine satin blade. But uh, by popular demand, I mean, people went bonkers for this knife. It sold out so fast on the first run that uh, Ben is offering a second run. And as usual, he's offering new materials, some old material, not old materials, but well-worn materials like uh, exotic carbon fibers, uh, but, um, and, and now in titanium, like he's been doing on these second run knives, there's a knurled titanium that is just, mm, looks great. But this one, I am so grateful he sent me this one because that is ironwood and it is spectacular. Uh, feels very warm and smooth to the touch. It's it's really nice to hold in hand. Um, but besides that, it just looks so beautiful. You've got a polished titanium clip here, polished on the on the top, but blasted on the sides like the bolsters. It is a bolster lock and uh, bolster locking knife. And then you have the S90V with the hand rub satin on this hand rubbed and just beautiful a long pull which works very well uh for that flickage um and uh what i mean by that is if you're only listening middle finger flick works great on this you can also use your thumb just to slow roll it um you can grab the um the long pull there or just the mere fact that it is a full height hollow grind so you have the the flared in cross section you have the flared spine of the blade you can just kind of grab onto that because the action is so ultra smooth on these bearings that um, i can left hand front flip it i can even left hand do that that sort of finger roll thing let's see if i can do the quote unquote and i think it's hilarious that people call this reach around uh yeah that works um i don't know if any of you <laughs> any of you guys saw full metal jacket but there's there are other uh other definitions, other meanings of reach around. Uh, but I, I, you know, hey, let's let it be a, a front flipper thing. And the ironwood here is, I'm wondering if he used ironwood because of the fact that it's made overseas, shipped here, and experiences a lot of different temperatures and humidities along the way. Uh, in talking with Ben Belkin of Jack Wolf Knives, that, that has been his main reservation in using um uh, natural materials, but that reservation has sort of uh, very slowly and scientifically seemingly uh, dried up uh, during the second run as he's offered various woods. Now, I am holding out hope for uh, dyed bone sometime in the future, only because uh, that's, I'm a sucker for that material too. So this, this beauty will be out uh, this Friday. So as you listen to this, uh, this Friday, uh, this knife will be dropping. I believe that's the 15th um so the 15th of march this beauty will be dropping be sure you go to all of the uh i would i would bookmark the various purveyors if you're interested in a particular version of this uh knife because 
Um, this being a front flipper and 3.25 inches, a little bit larger than the regular uh, Jack Wolf knives. This is more of an EDC um, locking folder, more in the tradition that that uh, in the less traditional, uh, so to speak. So people will be jumping all over it. That was totally awkward, but you get my point. Get get yourself over there and get the knife. All right, last uh, in state of the collection. This is one I traded for uh, with this old sword blade reviews. Showed it off on Thursday Night Knives. Haven't had a chance to show it off here. This was the knife I was looking to buy when I brought the Manticore X onto Thursday Night Knives and said, anyone want to buy this? Uh, I wanted to take the proceeds to buy an automatic SOCOM and, and I was up in the air about Tonto or, or um, Clip Point. And uh, my good buddy Dave, this old sword, Blade Reviews, uh, came on and said, hey, I got the knife you want, and I want the knife you got, so let's trade. And we did, and uh, here it is. I've been carrying it an awful lot. This is a 2018 model. This is one of the few knives where I actually actively love all the billboarding like i would be bummed if it weren't there uh, something about the microtech billboarding i really like um yeah so m390 blade steel i love the pvd coating on the on the um, bevels and on the swedge and then you've got this really awesome jimping up top uh right forward of the thumb ramp um which when you're holding it gives you this grip uh gives you like a pinch from from the thumb to the forefinger that really locks in the blade i i prefer that almost to this this is nice if you are dueling <laughs> uh this this sort of saber grip but coming up here on the jimping is where i tend to be uh, most um this knife of course at less than a week in my possession uh has not seen much action it has cut some bread it has cut cut something else uh, but nothing much. It has been dropped, uh, but that's okay. It didn't didn't break the tip, which I'm happy about. Got a little ding right there. Just a little ding on the edge. But, yeah. That will come out with, uh, event, you know, I can't even feel it when I run my fingernail on it. So that'll come out with a little bit of stonage, a little bit of uh, stropping. Uh, this... Uh, these inlays here are nice and grippy, but it's not an obnoxious rubbery feel like it, there's a slight rubber texture to it, but it doesn't have that. It doesn't even feel like the um, the Benchmades that that have been coming out in the last five years that have that rubberized texture. This feels it's a little more subtle and has a stippled texture, which uh, does adds to a lot, adds a lot to the the grippiness of it. All right, great knife, great action. Uh, will jump out of your hand if you're not prepared. So uh, be prepared. Uh, a great uh, glass breaker. And who knows, this might become the new road trip knife, though the old SOCOM Elite has been the, the road trip knife for so long. I'm not sure if I can do that. All right, uh, before we get to fantastic flipping folders, I want to show off some cool stuff that Jim's been working on in his, uh, in his lab. Heat, beat, repeat. This is the featured T-shirt of the week. Uh, featuring a really cool... Uh, this almost looks... Uh, the blade looks almost a bit like uh, the Terzuola um, uh, Tomashi, except for the top quillion. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I'm, uh, maybe I'm talking out of school here. But uh, Jim has just been uh, just furiously creating new designs of knife-based t-shirts and of course these t-shirts can also be made into different items if you like the uh if you like the patterns and stuff so go to the knife junkie.com slash shop check out the featured featured t-shirt of the week and uh if that one doesn't uh, strike your fancy you can go page after page and check out uh jim's other designs and they're super cool so check that out that's the knife junkie.com uh slash shop all right, flippers. You're saying, why are you talking about flippers today? They've been around a while, Bob. And uh, I realized that I've been avoiding them, sort of. Uh, if, a, if a knife has a flipper, it's almost incidental to me. Uh, I've been partial to washers. I've been partial to thumb studs lately. But um, in going through the, uh, the collection, I, I wanted to 
well, kind of pull out the ones that I think are the best. And these are these are the kind of flippers I'd like to see more uh, flippers being like. Uh, first one is from Finch. This is the buffalo tooth. Well, the knife itself is gorgeous. Uh, you you can just see from looking at it. It's a, an elephant toe style pattern in a modern flipping lo um, bolster lock context. You've got this incredible uh, wood that is um, not ebony. What's that wood called? Well, I'll come back to it. I'll remember it in a second. I'm having a brain, a brain, senior brain issue. We got sort of a hand rubbed satin horizontal and a nice that's already a thin blade but it's so broad and it's got such a high grind that it's nice and thin but i love this flipper very low profile uh finch flipper um these are oem'd by qsp and i've seen them use that flipper on uh, on other knives um i've heard people say oh that was a qsp flipper first i, I beg to differ uh i'm pretty sure that was a finch flipper first but uh, as as uh, par for the course for many Finch knives that are more traditional, they have they have made a lot of flippers um, that are now veering more towards the modern and less uh, uh, veering away from the more traditional aesthetic in to my eye. Uh, but on a lot of the earlier Finches, you would see this the um, the nail the nail neck. Even though obviously you don't need a nail neck with this flipper, um, but extremely low profile flipper. Um, I like that because it stays out of the way, but also you get incredible just from where it's located, uh, respective to the pivot, you get incredible rocketing action from that, uh, very subtle and small flipper. So really like it. And, uh, it also second, uh, seconds as a platform for your finger, if you want to choke, choke up. So instead of taking up cutting real estate with a choil, which always kind of sticks in my craw a little bit. Uh, this just gives you a broad space that's gemmed for you to put your hand on if you need to choke up. So first is the Finch Buffalo Tooth, and really any Finch knife because they all sport that same flipper. Next up is the American Blade Works Model 2. This uh, really is a culmination of everything that... Um, that Michael Miller learned about, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Yes. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. Sorry about that. Uh, so this, <laughs> this has really distilled everything, uh, learned in, in making the first, the model one, he's gone, he went through six different versions of that and, um, uh, got feedback from the community and, uh, and the like, and really, really nailed the, uh, flipper down. Now I have the American Blade Works Model One Version Five, uh, the model right before he settled on the six and and basically perfected it. And I noticed uh, at Blade Show a difference between the Model Five and the Model Six in the flipping performance. Now my Model Five is awesome and I love it. Um, I think the blasted um, surface took a while um, for the bearings to wear a race in so that it would be really smooth. Um, but I had noticed right off the bat that the model six, he really did dial it in. And with the, with the model two here, which is a stunning knife as it is, um, the performance, the high performance flipping action is just baked in from the start. Uh, didn't have to really go through all of the trial and error on this one. And, uh, yeah, Michael Martin, not Michael Miller. I'm sorry. Michael Miller is, uh, is from tactile knives and I just spoke with him and I conflated their names. So Michael Martin of American blade works here, um, just crushing it and doing it all a one man band. Of course he has the help of his awesome wife, you know, helping him. Uh, I always see her at blade show and they're a really cool family. Very nice family. He's got great kids and, and the whole nine and, uh, he's doing this all on his lonesome and he's creating great knives and you know what people they are not you know if you're buying spider co's and if you're buying uh bench maids um you can afford an american blade works uh model one or model two you just have to you know be aware of the drops because he, he can't produce them in numbers that spider co and Benchmade can but he can give you something way better way more personal and uh for the same price way more did i just say way more better someone let me know if i said way more better uh, if i do i owe each one of you five dollars 
Next up, this is uh, this is one that gets a lot of love in the summer. Um, the Concept Preta 2, uh, designed by Jonathan Renaudin, otherwise known as K. Maxrom from France. Uh, really beautiful knife, uh, very indicative of his design language with the double-peaked blade. Uh, whether Tonto or um, clip point like this, he very frequently has that style blade with that thumb swale uh, where you can come all the way up here. To me, it's always evocative of the SOG buoy that I love, that shape that was uh, pioneered um, for the fighting slash survival combat knife used by the Special Observations Group or SOG uh, during Vietnam, uh, that that blade shape. I love when I see a double peak and you see that a lot in K Max Rom's work. Uh, so that's the first thing that, that really got me to go for this knife, but also the blade shape. Uh, I, I mean, sorry, the blade length, the overall size, the ergonomics, the fact that it comes out in this came out in the micarta second, but first it was in a titanium version, had a great looking Tonto, very much like the Chris Reeves style Tonto. So this whole model line just has been exciting. I had the titanium, so a uh, version of this sold it to my good bud will be uh he's a he's a gentleman junkie and uh no he's uh enjoyed that knife quite a bit so this this one just has stellar action and i i like the um my carta version best personally because i've had better luck uh ironically for this list with the thumb studs in the liner lock version uh for some reason well not for some reason uh my hand shape and the ergonomics of the profile of the handle with the frame lock I, it's harder for me to not press in on the frame lock so uh, always always kind of preferred the micarta version of this knife it's got a, a downgraded steel and materials with 154 cm as opposed to s35 uh, but that's debatable and um you know titanium isn't always the answer so this is the preta 2 from concept all right, next up, this one, I love the flipper here. And I've seen other people do it, but uh, Joseph Vero, I think, uh, really main, mainstreamed it and does it best. That's that inline flipper. It's a regular flipper on the regular flipper side. You're using your pinky, or you could use your thumb, but I mean, you're using your forefinger here uh, like a regular flipper, but it does not protrude at all from the spine. It's just in line. And the first time I ever saw this was back in the day, over 10 years ago, I'd say, uh, when the um, Boker Burnley Quaken was new and hot and didn't have 50,000 versions of it. Uh, people were making this mod. They were carving away a little bit of the front of the bolster to reveal the tang, and then you could just grab the tang and flip it out. And... Um, I'm sure we saw other people do that uh, eventually uh, in the non-mod community, but I remember when I saw uh, Joseph Vero doing this in Vero Engineering and uh, it had him on the show a number of years back. He really was the first guy uh, who codified it, turned it into like a, a, uh, a feature of his knives. I really like it. It gives great action because the... Um, essentially the flipper tab is way forward of the pivot. So it takes very little effort to send the, the blade, especially since it's on really nicely tuned bearings, just sends it rocketing out. And then when it's out, you get that platform, which for this, for me, this is synapse is a small knife. Uh, it's a, well, it's a 3.25 inch knife. And uh, for me, I, I do need that platform. I'm not holding it back here like this though. I've had the XL in my hands, uh, thanks to uh, Hero Sticks, and I do did hold that one back here. But for the small one, I I tend to grab it up here. If you're wondering uh, when he released it with that stunning uh, maroon micarta, you'll be saddened to hear that he didn't. That's a mod I did myself. That's right. That's just writ die, people. Um, nothing like nothing like taking the. This is that dusty dusty micarta i could never get it to to look good it was just a nasty cut of micarta you know kind of looked like snot i hate to say that that's a horrible thing to say but i, I just could not get it to look good uh, no matter what i did so i dyed it i put it in some boiling maroon dye and it turned out beautifully 
Another modded knife with an exquisite flipper here is the Monterey Bay Knives Turbo. I had this uh, done up by Lindy Lou and Richie over at uh, Knife Modders. I wanted that high voltage green. And I wanted it to, to look sort of like the tarnished Statue of Liberty. Uh, and then and then that blasted black blade. I am going to have them redo. I keep saying this. I just haven't done it yet. I want to redo the clip in that black blast. Uh, but a short flipper tab designed by uh, the great Peter Carey. Um, one of the, you know, a, a very early maker of this kind of knife. And it just is so good. So so what am I what am I talking about here? I'm talking about um, Monterey Bay Knives manufacturing. Uh, because the smoothness is just so ridiculous on this knife. And then I'm also talking about that low profile flipper tab, the design. So the design and the manufacturing, uh, I guess on all of these uh, are what make them great. I mean, you you can't have one without the other. I guess you could have a great design, but a poor um, execution of it, you're not going to know it's a great design. Here, I also think it looks really good the way it looks when it comes out also it's very comfortable you'll notice there is no hinderer knife on this list though they are one of my absolute favorite knives in my collection the flipper tab is painful <laughs> let's let's be real about it it's not a comfortable flipper tab probably best used when you have work gloves on because you're not going to feel it here you've got uh, when it's open you've got a, a great little finger guard and a fetching uh, um, plunge grind uh, look there as well as a good plunger grind. But when it's closed, you have a very comfortable platform to put your finger on. Uh, similar to that QSP, it is uh, low angled and flat and gives you the perfect flip every time. Perfect flip, cool, clean smoke every time. Um, so love this thing. And if I get this done so it's not gold uh, and have it black, low profile, I will carry it. 100% more. I'm just self-conscious about a gold pocket clip, I got to say. Uh, Monterey Bay knives, by the way, all of the knives that I've ever picked up by them are mm, just chef's kiss awesome. All right, next up is the Kubi Flash. Uh, so we have a lot of different, you know, we have some expensive knives on this list and some inexpensive knives. This one at 40 bucks when I bought it, I don't know, it might be a little more uh, uh, is just astounding. I can't believe that this is a $40 knife. It is so uh, smooth. The action is incredible. D2 blade steel. I've never really had to sharpen this. I've used this one a lot because I'm like, oh, it's just a Kubi. I just... Uh, but this one is really a good user knife. This is also the knife I've carried with me uh, at Blade Show uh, a number of years because, well, when I've flown there, um, this is what I pack. Now out of tradition, but initially because I didn't, you know, if I lost something to TSA, it wasn't going to be expensive. Uh, but really great action on this knife. I mean, just I'm sure maybe many of you have Kubis and you know what I'm talking about. Uh, very smooth, very smooth bearing action. But also I'm a fan of this kind of um, flipper. It's jimped all the way around and it's like a volcano shape. It's. Uh, it's got a steep peak and there's no missing it. And on this kind of um, flipper, I feel like it's easiest to go um, light switch or push button either way. Yeah, just great fun to play with and really good ergonomics on this blade. Uh, I'm a big fan of the modified sheep's foot of this because it's got a great point. Why do you call it a sheep's foot, Bob, and not a worn cliff? Because I'm now being anal about worn cliffs and that uh, it has to go from here to here as a constant curve to be a worn cliff. Anything else, if it comes here and then has a, uh, a noticeable hump or peak and then drops down, now I'm calling that a sheep's foot. Here it would be a modified sheep's foot because it's got a point and a swedge and would be great as a thruster, whereas we don't know uh, ordinarily sheep's foot feet as great thrusters next up speaking of tactile knife company which i just was is the tactile rock wall a snappy snappy little uh gem of a knife uh to to borrow um nick shabazz's expression it really is a little gem of a knife this one 
is a prototype to this is pre-production uh, uh this was a copy that where is oh right there review sample uh before they really went all out on these uh this was given to me uh by by the company and uh michael miller who i mentioned earlier who who's uh one of their guys over there great dude talked to him a bunch of times on this show and they're constantly researching doing collaborations and coming out with new knives they have one coming out soon here that is going to use the snex lock maybe i'm talking out of school no 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 he already released it we already talked about it the snex lock and uh and it will be affordable um this ironically that you know so this is in my list as one of my favorite flippers because it is so snappy and so on the spot with a flipper that is much like that kubi uh shaped like a, a rounded off triangle you get incredible action from it it's small it's supposed to fit in an old school wrigley's five slice uh chewing gum pack which i haven't seen one of those in a while but i'm guessing it it will and everything about this i love except now they're not doing it with the flipper now it's with the thumb stud and i'm sure that that's awesome and great too but they really had this flipper dialed in so hopefully um hopefully they come back with that i think they do have plans to come back with the flipper uh, but they've been enjoying quite quite a lot of success with the with the thumb stud version this knife is really cool. They're doing great stuff over there. And um, uh, this old sword brought to my attention that they uh, OEM'd a push dagger for um, for Bastinelli, which is, I like that. I like that. Uh, Bastinelli has used Fox knives for years and some lion steel, a lot of Italian manufacturers. But uh, how great that he can keep some of it in-house or in-country. Um, he is French, and he is, uh, but he is an American. He lives here, so. Uh, okay, next up is one that you're not going to really get your hands on in this uh, version unless he comes out with the new one. Uh, but this is the Pinkerton inversion. And uh, this is released under Dirk Pinkerton's own shingle. But he has had this uh, out there in uh, by Kaiser. So without the ring and with a slightly differently shaped uh, blade. So I'm sure you'll be able to find the inversion uh, by Kaiser out there. Though it's discontinued, I think you can still find it. Um, this has a an interesting low profile uh, clip uh, or a low profile flipper. This has a similar low profile flipper uh, to the Vero Engineering inline flipper here. So you get that same uh, crazy reaction. All you do is just gently pull back on this tab and it rockets out a lot of that has to do with where it's placed you know it's placed forward of the pivot there and when it's forward of the pivot you get a lot more um, torque on that as you pull it back perfectly uh, dialed in detent is always necessary for a great flipper um, and in this case uh, you got that for sure but um, i know this is not everyone's cup of tea in terms of knife and also it's not currently available but uh, but really, I'm talking about that flipper style, and um, that can be found, say, on the Kaiser or in the Vero. It's just that inline style, and I love how it feels when it when it flips open. Okay, next is a. Uh, this was a hard one to pick because Off Grid Knives has a lot of really excellent flippers, but I went old school here. I went with the Enforcer, and the reason I went with the Enforcer uh, as opposed to say the Stinger, which is awesome is that this is big this is a full four inch bladed knife and it's big and heavy um i should say heavy duty it's it's you know it's got weight relief and everything it's, it for its size it's not heavy but it's it's a big boy and i i'm always impressed by um flippers that flip like more of a medium or small size knife uh but are big like this um yes the blade weight uh carries momentum and we'll shoot it out there um but something about the dialed in nature of these off grids now this one here i believe was a best tech uh made um enforcer but now i think most of them uh, most of the off-grid knives are not made by best tech i think most of them now are made uh, by one of two taiwanese uh, manufacturers and man they, they make incredible knives uh in taiwan they're known for it 
Uh, here you've got the you've got a sort of a shark's fin flipper tab. It looks a bit like a shark's fin, uh, uh, hovering directly above the center line of the pivot. Um, but with that curve, it catches your finger and kind of forces you to do a light switch. Um, and and not only that curve, but this angle of approach that's cut away from the front kind of puts your finger exactly where it needs to be to just shoot this thing open. Uh, it feels good when you open this because it feels like you got something really stout in hand, and you do, uh, but it thwacks out with authority. It feels almost like an automatic. Highly recommend this knife. This is the Red Dawn version of it with 154 uh, CM blade steel and this uh, red and black g10 very very nice uh but you can get that for uh with d2 and just straight black g10 for a lower cost all right uh no flipper list would be complete without this this is the k2 this is the one that i said the who knives uh that we showed in knife life news this is the blade that it reminds me of but this was the this is the flipper that i first flipper i got that was drop shutty uh where i where i was looking for it and got it like wow look at that um frankly i don't care about that anymore uh it is amazing and i'm always astounded and impressed but it's definitely not a prerequisite not something i look for and not a deal breaker if it doesn't have drop shut action um this of course is just a beautiful knife it's got the the nearly four inch uh hollow ground tanto blade um a beautiful blade and a very interesting handle the handle that i didn't want and then when i got i was so glad i got instead of the handle i wanted frankly i wanted the one that emulated the um handle of the samurai sword with the with the diamonds going all the way down but uh this is way cooler in my opinion and i'm glad uh, i'm glad this was all that was left because i was forced to buy it forced you see but you've got the the dimpled, stippled uh, faux bolster and the sort of dragon spine um, and great ergonomics. Uh, but the flipping action is just great. Kind of a combination of the of the shark fin and the and the uh, volcano here. So you got the high peak a little bit flat on top, which I love. It's not that point that you see. You get a little bit of a point on this or the point you get on a on a hinderer, which is so uncomfortable. So they knock off the point, but you still get the benefit. And uh, yeah, incredible action on this K2. You know, uh, Riyadh, they have that all, all mastered and dialed in. Here is the Synergy 4 from Civivi. Not only just a really, really cool, big tactical knife based on the Jim O'Young design from the late 90s early 2000s but this one has another low profile flipper tab that i love see that all you got to do is just grab that little bit of jimping and the whole big blade rockets out it has a different feel this one feels smaller than it is it feels smaller than say the off grid here which is also big but feels big feels heavy and uh and like I said, when this one uh, thwacks out, it 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 carries a lot of uh, energy with it. This one just flies out and um, doesn't really do much uh, in terms of like um, changing the balance. You know what I mean? When that blade comes out, it doesn't. It just it just zips out. And I don't I don't think I'm articulating what I mean here, but um, because the blade is less heavy when it comes out you uh, it feels less like it's going to come flying out of your hand i guess really nice uh small flipper tab when it's open but large enough i mean when it's closed but large enough when it's open to act as a finger guard which to me is still one of the main responsibilities of a flipper tab um so i i'm a little uh a little schizophrenic about whether um excuse the term uh, i'm a little uh, back and forth about whether it's more important to have a low profile flipper tab out of the way or, or something with a guard and and i will come back to if you can get the best best of both worlds low profile and with a guard um, and that's going to have a lot to do with the handle design right here then i'll go for that and that's what i like about this you do get that low profile here but it is a big tactical knife 
and you do want some um, some assurance you're not going to slide up there. Uh, and you get that from the widening of the handle, but also that jimped clipper tab. Okay, that was that was a struggle. Last up, I'll just go easy on myself and on you, is this. Uh, this is the um, Kukri designed by um, uh, Jason Knight and created by Fox Knives uh, through Elements at the time. This is the MK Ultra. And if you look at it, you'll see that the flipper tab is like a volcano considerably behind the, um, the uh, pivot. But I think it works so well because of the overall curve of the knife itself uh, it's got great flipping action this is made by lion steel or by fox in italy and they're you know they know what they're doing it's got a great flipping action but you wouldn't guess it from how you from how it looks in the closed position you'd think it would lag because the flipper is so far behind uh the the uh, the pivot but it's the curve of the handle and then the opposing curve of the blade i think totally unscientific that makes it flip out so great but also when it's out obviously a tactical knife or a hard use knife uh you have that flipper tab stopping you uh, because uh despite the fact that it is so much of a slashing and chopping knife the kukri is you can still thrust to great uh, aplomb with it and if you have a flipper tab there you're just going to be safer every time all right, that's it. These are my favorite flippers. I have a bunch of them, but these are the ones that really uh, draw me in for their various reasons. Some are small, some are large, all have great action and uh, and all make the knives more pleasurable to have, especially right now in this period of time where I'm, I'm really more about uh, uh, washers and thumb studs. All right, be sure to join us tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives. Tell me what you think about this lineup, this list here, and you can tell me in person. You just go to thenifejunkie.com slash join, and you can actually come on the show and we can meet and talk. Uh, let's do that. All right, for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Knife Junkie.